Good evening everybody, Kimberly Olson here, and I am so excited about this live interview we're gonna to get to do with Michelle Thompson. And um, we're just gonna chat here for a few minutes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce her and get her on, but if you're watching this live, uh, most of you participated in the registration for the event. If not, if you don't know what this is all about, stick with us because, oh sorry, there's somebody hopping on. Stick with us because we are going to be diving in all things negativity. Now, as a lot of you know, I'm not exactly um, a negative person, <laughs> um, but what I have found on one side of negativity, the other side is positivity. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And I'm going to show you and share my story of how Michelle helped me get to a positive place. So I'm going to go ahead, give me a second here. I'm going to add her. Let's see if she's on here. Michelle, are you on? Hold on one second, guys. There she is. Let's see if we can get her on here. Oh, oh dear God. Sorry, guys. Oh, no. I don't know what I just did. Ah! Okay. You guys still there? Oh, you're there. Okay. Awesome, Michelle. Let's get you on here. Here we go. <laughs> to use technology to our benefit. Hey! <laughs> oh, it's connecting. Oh, Michelle, I just have to say, we are not 20 and we figured that out. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> wow. Okay, everybody. Um, please welcome Michelle. Um, if you're just hopping on, it looks like people are still rolling in. Go ahead and give me some hearts as a welcome for her. And this is what we're going to do tonight. We're going to drop a one in the comments if you're watching this live. If you're watching the replay, let's drop a two in the comments below. Let's give some hearts for Michelle. If you're new and you've never seen Michelle before or myself, put new in the comments. And if you share this video, we want to encourage people to share this while we're doing this live because the more eyes we can get on this, the more people are going to get this message. And this is going to be extremely important. And to date, a lot of you have been on my lives before. This is the most important live I've ever done. That's how important this information is. And I really believe it's the key to all the success I've had. So do me a favor and go ahead and share this. And um, Michelle, I think I might, if you, you haven't already, you might want to share it onto your page. Yeah, I already shared it. Yeah. You're so awesome. Okay, so to start, thanks for everybody coming on tonight. And what we're going to do is we're going to get um, an exclusive uh, question to answer, some time to chat with Michelle and find out how she is going to help all of us learn more about letting go of negativity. So Michelle, can you introduce yourself first? Because a lot of them, this is the first time they've heard of you and got a chance to listen. Can you share a little bit about your background? Okay. So you guys, my name is Michelle Thompson and um, I am a clinical hypnotist and a life coach. And basically, I'm a little bit different than your typical hypnotist because I'm more of a reprogrammer. So you want me to kind of explain that? Because probably people don't understand that. <laughs> yeah, like what is the main difference between you, uh, what you do and your, your approach than a traditional therapist? Because I think sometimes when there's kind of a stigma around therapy, and so it would be nice for you to explain what, how you're different. Okay, so I take a mind-body-soul approach. So basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm kind of getting everything in alignment. So you've got, you've got your mind, your body, your soul, everything kind of in conjunction. The problem is a lot of times as people is their, their wants and desires don't always, you know, mesh up. So the subconscious mm -hmm. mind wants one thing and the heart wants something else. And so uh, a lot of times that comes from programming from uh, the past. And programming is the way that what a lot of people say, like, oh, I'm just wired that way. So, so what that means is, is that your, your mind is kind of in the habit of reacting emotionally and um, even sometimes physically to uh, specific things that happen to you in your life. So what I do is I reprogram the mind, the neural transmitters into reacting differently so that a person can actually get that subconscious mind and the heart kind of in alignment. 
Okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay, (laughs) good. And we're going to, she's going to, Michelle's going to take me through some examples too, to kind of show you what she means by that. For those that are just hopping on, please drop a one in the comments below. If you're watching this live, let's give some hearts for Michelle. This is the first time you're seeing her put a few hearts there for me. So I know that you are checking out Michelle for the first time. You can put new in the comments. Um, Yeah, let's get some thumbs up if you're going to, if you're very excited about the information she's going to share. Put two in the comments if you're watching the replay and put shared in the comments if you've shared this already. Please share this. Um, We want to make sure that people are seeing this message. So let me tell you guys a little bit about how I found out about Michelle because I know a lot of you watching, you kind of know a little bit about my story. So to give you guys my background, um, I was voted most optimistic in high school. Some of you, (laughs) some of you know me um, all the way back from then. I can see that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a, it was a, a shoe in for sure. It, <laughs> um, and I've always been like this. However, what's really interesting about, I think about me, and I know that notice this with a lot of you, is that we seem very positive and optimistic and happy to other people, and we display that on the outside. But on the inside, it's a very dark place for a lot of us. There's a lot of there's a lot of perfectionism, achievement oriented, um, trying to be all things to all people. Um, just, I was a very much a people pleaser. And so there was a lot of anxiety and worry and negativity. So all growing up, I was always um, just doubting myself. I wasn't very confident, and but I seemed like it because I was just always just so driven to you know, achieve and have recognition and things like that. And so by the time, um, you know, here I am with a family, um, two little girls. I work full time um, and just finding myself in this place where um, I had everything, but I wasn't feeling content. And and when I really looked at it, I found out that it was a daily reoccurrence of these negative thoughts. Like I would wake up in the morning thinking, thinking bad thoughts. And I was finding that I was so stressed out that I didn't know how to manage that. And so it would just be a looping system. I would reinforce it with bad behavior. Like I would be so stressed out. I would get home and want to have a glass of wine to unwind. Like a lot of, you know, I know I work with a lot of you privately and I know that's kind of something that you'll do or you'll eat or you'll watch TV. And so then I would feel guilty about that. And it would just go around and around and around. And a good friend of mine told me about you, Michelle. And she said, look, I've been in therapy for 15 years and just in, you know, a couple of months with Michelle, I'm literally a different person. And I was seeing this with her and I couldn't believe it. I mean, she really was a different person. And so I thought, oh, I don't know about this. And within just a couple sessions with Michelle, I was already starting to notice that when I would wake up in the morning, I wouldn't automatically go to the negative. Like it was the weirdest thing. I think it actually took a solid month. And I felt it was just the most free, exciting feeling where I didn't have to try to be happy and I didn't have to say affirmations or tell myself, be grateful. I literally would wake up and I still do to this day, I would wake up and feel happy and optimistic and excited about my day. Um, And if any of you are going through this, um, please put some hearts if you've gone through this before where you were negative and now you feel that you're automatically positive because there's some of you watching this that are and we can always get better. But if you've made that shift, that's awesome. So I'm so happy for you. If you haven't, which a lot of you have expressed to me that you want to make some changes in your life, whether it be you know, weight loss, being healthier, more energy, you know that the driving force behind that is your, is your mind and your thoughts. And since working with Michelle, um, and I can't see the comments, you guys, unfortunately, um, can you guys, uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and post a comment on there. We'll answer questions as we go. Um, But now um, through the work I've done with Michelle, um, I am a positive person automatically. um, And I've given up I would say, I don't, I can't even think of one, but I've given up, um, you know, those destructive behavior, the destructive habits that I didn't feel good about, right? It doesn't matter what other people think, but how do I feel about the choices I make every day? And it's amazing. Like I feel so happy and excited and I have energy. And a lot of you have probably seen that on my lives and why I've been able to give and share. I mean, I have a lot going on as you guys know, and I'm pumped to do these live, these live videos and be posting on Facebook because there's so much energy when you let all that stuff go. It really is amazing the amount of energy you can have once you do this work. So um, that's a little bit about my experience with Michelle. Now, Michelle, you, you mentioned something about neural pathways and the automatic, like the reprogram, reprogramming and the automatic thoughts. Can you share with us like how that works? You, you talked about repetition and stuff like that, but how does that work? 
Well, before we get on that, I just want to, if you don't mind, I'd like to actually tell yeah. people how I got started. Sure, yeah. Important, just like what you said. So I actually suffered from extreme anxiety and depression. I mean, I, I was just a very, very depressed person. And um, I was just losing friends left and right yeah, because I would call somebody up and tell them about my problems. And that's all I ever did. You know, I mean, I was living a life of depression and um, a lot of that came from, um, you know, childhood, which is where all of this stuff comes from, which will answer your question about the neural pathways in just a second. So um, I was I was very uh, secluded life because my parents were in a very cultish like for religion my mom will hate me for saying that I'm sorry mom if you get on <laughs> but, um it was and so I really wasn't allowed to like socialize with anybody except for kids from church and um and I was very awkward growing up you know I went through puberty a whole lot older I was um you know very tall two heads taller than everybody else and uh, my hair was naturally curly and before in those days there was no curl and iron or straighteners or anything like that you know so I was just big hair tall girl you know and and it and it made me very insecure and very uncomfortable and afraid to talk to people and that progressed up into adulthood when I got into my 20s um late 20s I was kind of like enough's enough. And I tried counseling. It didn't work. I tried um, so many different things. And then finally, I would just spend hours in the bookstore sitting on the floor reading self-help books. And I ran across a book that was called You'll See It When You Believe It by Wayne Dyer. And oh, that was, was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so when I read that book, I sat there and went, oh, my God, this is my fault. You know, and I mean, in essence, it's not my fault, but it really, it's like, well, this is what I tell my clients. This may not be your fault, but it's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And, and so I actually really just reinforced it by escalating the thoughts. And so I, once I realized that I started on a pathway to try to work on it, but I had no idea how to do that. Um, through years of reading books and trying so many different methods, spirituality and a lot of stuff, I've made myself better, but not in complete control. Um, once I, um, I ran into a, a Dallas monk in a crystal store <laughs> and it was, I know it was really kind of weird, you know, and he like bowed to me and I was like, uh, wow. You know, <laughs> like shake your hand. I don't know about the bowing thing, but um, yeah. And, and so um, I, and um, anyway, he changed my life and he, he made me more aware of what was going on inside of my mind and everything. And through this process, I started, I started getting really interested in what the heck he was talking about. Most of it, I was ignorant to. And so I, literally just started taking classes and I had no idea what classes I was going to take. And it was all for all my own self-development. And I started to, you know, I took a Reiki class and I took a shaman class and I started off with the whole spirituality stuff, you know? And then, um, then I, um, just, I ran into, uh, somebody who, who taught, you know, I was looking at her bio and she taught hypnosis and wow, I wonder what it would take to become a hypnotist. So I started doing research on that. And I, you know, I'm the kind of person, if I'm going to do it, I want to know everything. So I found a course that was a really long course. It was a year long course that you become a clinical um, hypnotherapist. And I did that. And then I took the Tony Robbins thing and I did Bennett Stellar. And anyway, the list goes on. <laughs> and then one day, um, you know, and I'm feeling great at this point, you know, I'm like, I've got this Dallas monk helping me and my mind is like completely changed. I'm listening to fire and arrow beats every night, you know, I'm like reprogramming my head. And, um, and so I decided that I was gonna, um, I was gonna start doing this part time and I lost my job and, uh, my the business that I was in, um, the guide to the company just completely shut down. 
And then I, uh, my sister said, well, you can work as a, a caretaker and help me with my son if, you know, until you find something else and I'll give you a little extra money. So I started doing that and within a week he passed away. And so that Aww. took me yeah, I know. And and so then I was like, okay, here I am. <laughs> I was like, oh, shoot, what do I do, you know? So I packed up all my stuff, put it in storage, moved in with my mom and said, you know what? If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now. I went and found an office. I had zero clients, and I put the hands of all of this into the universe. And I said, hey, if you want me to do this, here I am. So it worked. <laughs> And yeah, apparently. So I started to notice because I had so much training in spirituality and I had training in life coaching and I was a hypnotherapist. I was kind of like bouncing all over the place at first, you know, it's like, oh, okay, maybe I'll life coach you. Maybe I'll, you know, do a little hypnotist stuff on you, you know? And then um, I started noticing the people that I was doing kind of a combination of all this stuff um, started seeing results like really fast. And I was like, okay, I got to come up with a program and I got to get this mastered. I mean, and I want it to be like, first you do this, then you do this. And so I did three clinical trials, um, in my office. I found a whole bunch of volunteers and, um, and I got this thing mastered and now, I mean, I've got it down to a science. So yeah, you do. That's literally. So it's basically, it was a program that I developed by using, you know, multiple things, because here's what I found is that you can heal the spirit, but if you don't heal the mind, the spirit will break again the next time something tragic happens. And so mm -hmm. healing somebody spiritually, it works for a little while, but they fall. And so yeah. you don't, you know, you can sit here and go, I have faith, I have faith. And then, you know, something else happens. I mean, I had three major events happen to me simultaneously, mm -hmm. you know? So it was like, I was homeless practically. If I didn't have my mom, I don't know what to do, you know? Yeah, so, for sure. So I had to have complete faith, you know? And so, and a lot of people, they were like, I don't know that I could have done that, you know? But so basically um, I found that when I, when I was working with people specifically on just healing the mind, the spirit was still broken. And so, and when I say the spirit, it's like what a lot of people think their soul, you know, when you've been hurt so many times that that spirit, even though you might cure the mind, the spirit's still broken. So I, I found that, that you've got to heal the spirit as well. And then the third component was the body. And this is kind of like where you come in, you know, yeah. there's a lot of things that you can do with your body that actually create chemicals and those chemicals can actually make you feel better. So when I started putting all those components together, I started seeing people changing like four weeks, eight weeks, you know, 12 weeks, 16 weeks. I mean, max, you know, three to four months. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing how fast it was working. So Anyways, um, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. <laughs> and kind yeah, of that's you. awesome. But back it is true, definitely. Um, yeah, is what were, you were saying about the mind and the spirit. Like, I think a lot of my people that I work with and that are in my groups or on my page, you know, I've got a lot of um, like entrepreneurs and driven women and moms that are running a household. I feel like a lot of them are trying and I feel that they are like you said, they've worked on their spirit and I've been there where you're feeling good. You know, you've maybe done a weekend workshop or you've read a book or whatever and you're feeling good and then something happens, like you lose a job or lose a loved one or something happens and you just wind down. Or I've noticed um, like people will, if everything's balanced, they're, they're not too stressed, they're okay. But as soon as like the holidays come and things like that, I've noticed people kind of get derailed. Um, before we move on, if you guys are watching this live, drop a one in the comments. If you're watching the replay, drop a two. If you're new to myself or Michelle, put new in the comments and please share this video if you're just now hopping on. Um, I can't see the comments. So Michelle, can you see the comments? Yeah, I can. Okay. So feel free. I can't see them. So if you see anything that you want to address, please do. Um, if you're liking what you're seeing so far and hearing, please put some hearts out there for Michelle and some thumbs up. I can't really see much of anything, but that's Nobody okay. Said Thanks, guys. Said 
and it just kind of passed about seeing a bad aura around themselves. I'm not really sure. It It's already scrolled up, so I can't okay. see it. Okay. Um, but if you did say something like that, just go ahead and rewrite it so I can see it. Um, so while we're waiting on that, you asked about neural pathways. Or yeah, neural pathways. and negativity. Yeah. yeah. So so basically what happens is, is that um, you're – I wish I had, like, a diagram I could show you. But um, so imagine that there's these little circles in your head, and they're, these are uh, what you would call, like, um, emotion transmitters, okay? okay. And they, they actually have um, – like adrenaline or endorphins and stuff like that. So when you have experiences in your in your life starting in childhood and it's a real positive experience, you'll your that your mind for that first time when you're experiencing that emotion for the first time, it it literally like creates like a wire, a connection into that emotion. Okay. So the next time that you experience something like that, your brain goes, hey, I know how to do that, and it runs that pathway right to that emotion. So that's why sometimes when something happens, like, and you have a, a almost like a physical reaction or emotional reaction, like instantly, it's because it's it, you've created a pattern. Now, sometimes those patterns are not good. So let's say, for instance, <laughs> most mm -hmm. of them are, aren't always. So, um, so let's say that uh, your first experience with love um, happens, and I'm going to get into some nitty gritty, dirty stuff. Okay, so I hope you're mm -hmm. okay with that. But sometimes, yeah, no, PG, yeah, no, no kids on here, please. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to talk about sex. I mean, like sex, sex, but okay, I don't mean like that. <laughs> but um, but but some stuff that's that's really hard to look at. But so a lot of my clients, um, you would not believe how many have been sexually molested as children. And so there's, it's actually uh, happens to a lot more people than you would realize. And, and so what happens is their first experience with love by somebody that they trust is a negative experience like that. So a lot of times the, the brain starts creating a pattern and sometimes, and so they, it'll, it'll run that pattern. And so the next time a person meets somebody in their life that, that has a similar experience to that person that did that they the the brain kind of wires it now then the next time could be maybe abuse or something like that like physical abuse and and maybe the it's um it's love and so you've got love pain hurt betrayal and it all starts wiring through that and so what for a person sometimes a lot of my clients for them to experience love they have to go through the whole gamma the only way that they can really understand love i know I know it's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. A lot of these people cannot experience love and they ask themselves, why do I keep on getting in these destructive, toxic relationships? Because, because they, the, the brain releases, um, the endorphins because you're, you can, you know, you're subconsciously, you're, you're going to be attracted to that kind of person. Um, because it's a chemical reaction that ends up happening. It's like, Oh, I'm going to be a victim with this person. So poof, I get the endorphins. But then you run through pain and then you run through love. And the only time that you feel love is going to be in that way. So, sorry, I have a little bit. I need to get some water in a second. Um, <laughs> I didn't think about that before I did this. Um, so a lot of times what happens is, is that these, these women that have been abused, they have a really hard time getting into healthy relationships. And so mm -hmm. what ends up happening is that they're, they're finding themselves um, – you know, only attracted to bad boys and they can't be, um, sexually attracted. I actually wrote a, a post about this on my, on my page about being sexually attracted to, to people that are abusive and stuff like that. What bad. is, what is your page name? Um, on my Facebook. It's, Oh, you wrote it on your Facebook. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to know your website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And so they, so basically they, they find themselves attracted to these, um, these guys that cheat on them, hurt them, destroy them. And so it's really hard for, um, for women sometimes, you know, to get into a healthy relationship because they say, Oh, well, I'm not sexually attracted to them. You see what I'm saying? So that's actually, yeah. that's a neural pathway that's running. Another one could be, um, somebody says something to you and you get angry just like that. And, and it's not something that should cause anger. Right. Mm -hmm. So, 
And so you're wondering, okay, so it's connected to something else. Well, I do this little, this little experiment thing where I, I'm showing people um, how the brain works. So I take a, a, you know, a huge bowl full of rocks and they're all different colors. And I start with a black one and I dump all the rocks out and they're all different colors. And I said, okay, so line them up based on colors. So they start with a black one and then I'll put a dark one and then I'll put a purple one and then I'll put a green one and then a light green, then maybe a beige one and then a gold one and then a clear one. Okay. So it's, it's a lineup like that. So then after, after they uh, do that, I say, okay. And I take all of them away and I only leave the first one and the last one. And I said, what do these two have in common? And they go, nothing. And I go, exactly. Your brain is taking very similar circumstances and wiring it together. So you can pick up a pillow <laughs> and suddenly have an emotional reaction to that. So that's how the neural transmitters work. They just, you're, they just wire, they find similar circumstances. Let me read this real quick. Okay. And child experiences. And if you guys are just hopping on, drop a one in the comments so we know you're, you're on here. Uh, if, you drop, if you're watching this live, put a one. If you're watching the replay, drop a two. If you're new, put new in the comments. And if you're sharing this video, which we want, put share in the comments and give us some hearts and thumbs up for anything and everything that you like about this. So Audrey, um, just to tell you about the inner child, she mentioned something about inner child stuff and it's true. It's true. You have to heal the inner child. But what I do that's really interesting. And I don't think I ever did this with you, but, um, I've done it with several of my other clients. And what I do is I take them, I take them and I said, okay, imagine yourself as an angel. Okay, so you imagine yourself as an angel and then you're going to go back in time. So I take them all the way back to birth and then um, and then I have them see the, the child that's being born and then have the, you know, kind of say hi to the baby, you know, and, and the baby kind of mm -hmm. giggles and stuff like that. And then um, and then say, I'm always going to be here. I promise I'm going to be here for you. So then I take them to the first event where they they had some sort of tragic thing happen. And I have them as an angelic person um, say to the child, hey, you something's about to happen, but you're really strong. You're going to be able to get through this. And then I just and I just keep on taking them through each event through their life until they get to the current um, point. OK, so it's it's all the way through childhood, all the way through high school, you know, junior high and then high school and then to the current moment and then. And then at that current moment, you know, and then I always tell the, the client to always say, call out my name. My name's the same as yours. And so all you have to do is just say, Kim, 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 I need you. <laughs> and, and then that angel will be there. But you're the angel. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. at the very, very end, I have them at, you know, present moment say, call out to, call out to your angel. And then they call out and then they see their future self as an angelic person that is completely healed and is always there for them. And it's like this miraculous moment where um, they just transform. I mean, that in itself right there, people walk away going, oh, my God, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's huge. We, we didn't do that. Um, but what I like about that is. I've noticed that people are their worst enemies with their thoughts and they're the most critical of themselves and they are impacting their own confidence. And I think that example, what you're just talking about, it's sort of, like you said, you're, you, they're seeing themselves as that perfect person, their future person, their angel. And it, it's kind of one of those things, like if you're not going to be there for yourself, how do you expect others to be? And I really like that. I think that's neat. Well, it also teaches you to love yourself. And, yeah. and so that's neat. Julie, yes, it is through hypnosis. And um, remembering a lot of times we forget. Okay, so this is actually a good question. She asked, why don't I remember a lot? I'm guessing maybe your childhood. So I'll tell you a story about me. <laughs> so when I was sitting down with my mom one day and she's like, I decided I'm going to write a story about my life. And I said, okay, and why are you doing that? And she goes, because there's so many things that have happened during childhood and through your life that I don't want you guys to forget. And, and I said, I don't know, I don't want to go, and I don't think I want to live that over again. She goes, 
why, Michelle, you had so many really great things happen when you were a child. And I was like, I don't remember anything good. In fact, I don't remember much. And what I do remember was not good. <laughs> and mm -hmm. she was like, and she said, she goes, that's really sad, Michelle. And I said, well, it's true. You know, my whole childhood was based on this really bad religious stuff that was all these bad people in the church doing mean things and, you know, and, you know, making you get in front of the church and profess your sins and making you feel like a bad, horrible person, you know? And, and I said, I just, you know, um, I didn't like it. And there was a, there was an old man in our church that used to always there. He didn't show up very often because he was kind of sick. He had some heart problems, but every time he showed up, he always brought me this beautiful bouquet of, um, you know, to, Oh shoot. What did I do? We'll fix it. If, if, um, you're frozen. If you can see it on there. Oh, do you want, sorry. Oh, there you are. No, no, no. Okay. I just said some, something kind of popped up on my screen and it caused some problems. Sorry. Um, anyway, he brought me, he used to always bring me this little corsage and, and it was so nice. I remember his name was Buddy Wiltrow and it was a, it was a sweet, you know, gesture. And I remember giving him a hug and another man in the church said, well, why are you always giving him hugs? Why don't you give me one? And so I reached over and hugged him. The next thing I knew, they announced in the church that the girls were not allowed to hug the men because it gave them bad thoughts. Oh, <laughs> my word. Yeah, anyway, it was a bad thing. So, so basically, that was not good, you know. So my mom was like, you know, but you had so many good memories. And I was like, Mom, I don't remember hardly anything about my childhood. And, and so she starts bringing up things. She goes, do you remember that time we went? on this vacation to Arkansas. Do you remember that time you did, dressed up like Daisy May and we went to this, this thing, you know? And she's like, do you remember this? And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And, and so it took her, you know, opening up those things because what happened was I forgot all those things because I wanted to forget those bad things that happened. So to answer mm -hmm. your question, I think it was Julie, um, sometimes, block when we block events in our life because they're, they're tragic you end up blocking some of the good things too so it's so that's a, a really big reason why a lot of people end up forgetting a lot of things about their childhood so it's really difficult because it just kind of blocks a whole lot of you know time so nice yeah um so one thing I want you to share, because um, this is something that I was completely shocked with the work I did with you. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are just hopping on, put a one in the comments. If you're watching the replay, drop a two. Please share this, by the way, onto your page. So hypnosis. So when I was a senior in high school, some of you were there, I lied. So we had to go on stage. There were like four people they picked to be hypnotized. Yeah. And I full on, it didn't work and everybody else was hypnotized and everybody was laughing. So I pretended. So those are in high school. It's my confession. I totally lied. I faked my way through it. And I so whenever it. I, yeah, I mean, I faked it completely and I guess I was just embarrassed. I don't know, but my whole life, I always thought hypnosis was that. And I'd read somewhere that like a very small percentage of people can be hypnotized. So when I started working with Michelle, she talked to me about hypnosis and my friend that had referred me to her was just swore by it. And I thought, this is just weird. So I can tell you that was also a key component in the, um, not even just the reprogramming. A lot of the reprogramming that happened for me was with talking with you, Michelle, but the parts that I noticed with hypnosis is that it, it, it helped me get all the things I wanted that were positive, like abundance, confidence, um, going after my dreams, you know, creating, um, you know, the life that I want, all the good stuff I actually got through the hypnosis. So can you share what it is in that? Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Stigma? A lot of misconception about hypnosis. Okay. So almost everybody that walks in here tells me that they can't be hypnotized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, so that's, you know, they're like, I don't know if this is going to work and you know, but we're going to try it. And I'm like, well, okay. You know, but <laughs> Like, why are you here then? <laughs> like last resort for a lot of people. They just want to try something because they're at their, mm -hmm. their wit's end, you know? And so I kind of tend to be the last resort kind of person that most people come to when they've tried everything. They say, well, what the hell? I'm going to try Michelle. And so basically what hypnosis is, is not what you see on TV. 
okay? It's not what you experienced in high school on the stage. Most of those people are faking, okay? Now, there is 5% of the population is what you would call a natural synambulant. And a synambulant is what you would call like a sleepwalker. So, mm -hmm. so if you were to put a sleepwalker in a trance, he's going to go to sleep. So right. they're going to start literally like acting things out. My brother was a sleepwalker, okay? And he used to walk around. You know, I remember as a kid, he'd get up out of the bed and he'd grab, you know, we used to have CBs. When I, that tells you how old. <laughs> and so, anyway, um, he, would, he would go and he'd grab, he'd grab and he goes like this and he'd pull it and he goes, breaker one, nine, four, 10, 46. Mm. It's just oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> funny funny stuff you know he used to do the craziest thing so anyways um so and recently um he actually he has a business he has multiple businesses in different locations but he has one in um in uh, one of those islands over there i can't believe i um forgot the name of it. anyways um he's anyway so we were he was out there and he got up in the middle of the night and he says he sleeps naked and so he got up in the middle of the night and he walked outside of the, the condo and started walking the beach naked and he awesome. woke up and when he apparently he didn't bring his keys because the door automatically locked and so he wakes up and he's naked on the beach and the sun's starting to rise and he was like oh my god so he literally like thumbs up for that banister, you know? <laughs> It's crazy. Oh, I know it's crazy. Anyways, uh, so hypnosis is not, <laughs> that's what you call natural synambulant. And that's how most people think hypnosis really is. They think that they're supposed to just check out and not know what's going on. And that only yeah. happens to about 5% of the people. Most people, what hypnosis is, is that, no, not Trinidad, Amanda, it's the, oh, uh, Barbados. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just, it just clicked. Amanda said Trinidad. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's my daughter, by the way. Um, Hi. <laughs> so anyway, so um, so basically what it is is where you go into an altered state, an altered state where you're calming the mind, where the mind's not thinking about what you're going to eat for dinner or, you know, or what happened yesterday or replaying scenes of things that have happened to you in your life. So you're basically going into a state where you're just kind of clear in your mind, a state of meditation, basically. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the state that you're going into. Okay. And so, I mean, you've done it. It's a very mm -hmm. quiet, very peaceful space. You're, all you're doing is just trying to get the mind to quiet down. So imagine this, okay? So you've got a fan, and it's going really fast, okay? So if I throw a rock at that fan, what's going to happen? It's going to go flying or jam it up. Exactly. So imagine that your mind's going like this which is how most people's mind goes, okay? It's 90 miles an hour. We live in a day where we have to multitask, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're doing 10 things at one time, so your mind's used to that. And so it's really hard to settle down. So if your mind's like blah, 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 all over the place and I'm trying to talk to you, what happens? You're going to retain about 2% of that, 5% maybe, yeah. right? So what you have to do is you have to slow the mind down. So think of slowing the fan down. So I take the fan and I, slow, I turn it down to the very lowest setting. Now it's, you know, now I'll throw a rock. What happens? Mm -hmm. The chances yeah. of it going through is higher. I may have to see three or four rocks before I actually get through those holes, but basically that's what ends up happening. You see what I'm saying? You've got mm -hmm. to slow the mind down. And when the mind gets slowed down, then you're able to, talk to the mind in a, in a more, you know, um, a cognitive way. Is yeah. I mean? And one of the things you always would say to me is it's subconsciously like you're, you're getting to my subconscious. Mm -hmm. So it's not even about me trying to feel like I have to do something with it. Cause I think sometimes when we do like meditation, which I totally believe in and visualization, I feel like we feel like we have to do something like quiet our mind or listen to the meditation and not have thoughts, but it's with the hypnosis. What I liked about it, it was I just had to be open to it and receptive. And you just you had to were experience, it. experience it. See, yeah. what, 
yeah so, just be there right you just have to experience it so like if i tell you look at a you know imagine a red apple you just imagine a red apple and mm -hmm. i mean it's really simple i mean you can do that right now with your eyes open you can just imagine right. a red apple so mm -hmm. i just usually start with um you know some calming techniques like you would do with meditation and um and then i basically start then i move into progressive relaxation which is you know relaxing each part of the body and then, um, then I kind of start with kind of storyline of some sorts. Like I'll bring you somewhere into some sort of really cool, like journey type place, you know, like mm -hmm. we've done that plenty of times, you know, you take a journey somewhere, maybe a cabin, maybe a walk on the beach, you know, whatever it is. But in that journey, you start to experience new things, you know, you'll see something, you'll experience something um, and kind of take it from there. So, yeah. That's awesome. Okay. So um, for those that are just hopping on, put a one in the comments. Hey, Michelle. And for those, for those watching the replay, put a two in the comments. And for those who've been watching the whole time, thanks so much for staying on, you guys. I appreciate it. So can you talk a little bit about letting go of negativity? So there's a difference between people working with you, and then there's a difference for some things that they can try to do maybe at home, those that are watching. Is there um, anything that you can get, share to kind of point them in the right direction or explain a little bit about how they can take control? Because I feel like a lot of people feel like it's just happens to them. Okay, so first off, you can take control of your mind. Most people do not believe. They think that the way that they think is who they are. Absolutely wrong. Hey, um, my friend Michelle Cronenberger, it's Stockholm. I don't know if you can see that. She's watching right now, and she, I grew up with her. And she knows where I came from, you know? So she Awesome. Knows. Let's see some so, arts. Yeah, <laughs> she knows. I mean, she knows where I came from. So, she, you know, so um, it's that's a person that, that remembers the the – she was actually in the church that I was telling you about. I don't know where you came in at Michelle, but um, I was telling them about the church, <laughs> the crazy church. <laughs> Anyways. Um, yeah. So, okay. So negativity, how can we get rid of this? Okay. So there's a lot of things you can do, but the first thing is, is you've got to acknowledge that it's not who you are. It's just the program. Okay. So you've got to think of your mind as this miraculous, amazing organic computer. And Nobody gave you instructions. And you've got this great thing inside of you, and nobody gave you instructions. Like, what do I do with it? So guess what? People come along, and they program it for you. Your parents do. Your friends do. Your boyfriend does. Your husband does. Everybody around you is programming you, but you're not programming yourself. So your dad says to you, you're a worthless piece of shit. You'll never grow up to be anything worth anything. I hear that one a lot and um, you know, uh, or that you're not good enough or, you know, you're too fat, you know, you're not attractive or something like that. You know, there's, there's so many things that have been told to people. And so that gets programmed into their minds. And so you've got to realize that it's just a program running. And if it's a program running and it's a taught behavior, it's a taught emotion, then anything that can be taught can be untaught. So anything can be learned, can be unlearned. So you can learn a different way. So basically, the first thing you want to do is get away from affirmations, okay? You know that. Affirmations. <laughs> I mean, come on, seriously, what is it? I mean, anybody who's used these affirmations, tell me, does it work? No. I mean, you're like, I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not working. <laughs> Okay, seriously, um, it doesn't work. You have to put emotion and empowerment and some physical physicality into it. So you've got to like really, you've got to start off with um, saying things to yourself when you decide that are true, true stories. Okay, so and we can get into the whole storytelling thing. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, I am. Yes, you are what, Shane? <laughs> Shane's online, too. Um, yeah, you've got, to be, you've got to stop telling yourself stories. I mean, the lies that we tell ourselves are the things that program ourselves, so we just reinforce that programming. So the negativity just stays because you keep on talking to yourself in a negative way. 
And so as long as you're as long as you're talking to yourself in a negative way and you're just you're taking all the stuff that's that's running in your mind, then you're gonna it's gonna keep on coming back. So one of the things that uh, here's a really good one for you is a lot of times people say, Why can't I do this? So um Give me one. Tell me something. That so what you and I talked about this the other day, um, for example, of fitting, finding a time to exercise. Like I just cannot get okay. to the gym. Okay. So you usually say to yourself, why can't I? Mm -hmm. Why can't I exercise? So what is your brain going to say to you? I'm going to use two different techniques. I used a different one on you the other day. Um, okay. So let's do this one, the why, why one first. So you ask, so I'm going to ask you, you know, Okay, Kim, why can't you go to the gym? Why can't you exercise? Yeah, because I know, like, I can't get there before work because I have to drop my girls off in the morning. And then by the time I get home, it's time for dinner and all that and getting them ready for bed. And by the time they go to bed, it's, what, 730? I'm not, I just know myself. I'm not going to work Okay, so basically, you're, okay, but you're also talking from a person that's been reprogrammed. <laughs> okay, so... Most people, yes, I have. Yes, you are. Um, that's actually a really good answer. Um, and I, we'll we'll deal with that one on the on a, on the second exercise that I do. Um, okay. The what most people say when they ask when I ask them why can't you exercise, they say because I'm lazy. Because mm -hmm. you know, um, I've heard that. Yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff. I'm lazy. I'm too I tired. Don't energy. Mm -hmm. I'm too tired. You know. Or, insult themselves okay mm -hmm. so so then the, so then what you do is you just reframe the the question so you want to start with never saying why because if you ask yourself why the very first thing that's going to happen is, is you're going to go into the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind is going to pull what's ever programmed and it's going to repeat it back to you so if all you have is crap in your head that's programmed the only thing that's going to come back is crap you got it mm -hmm. So yeah. if I ask myself, why can't I find somebody that loves me? What, what is my mind going to say? Did it's going to say, worth it? yeah, exactly, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Because that's what's running in my ha mind all the time. Okay, so let's try a different way. How can I? Now that changes everything. So it gets mm -hmm. outside of the subconscious mind. Now you're not looking for all the reasons why, you know, that, that you're worthless. But now you're going to start saying, what, how can I be creative? So you're going to say, how can I find time to exercise? Mm -hmm. How can I um, find somebody to love me? Now, the first thing that, so let's, let's, so if um, you're going to say, how can I find um, somebody to love me? The first thing that's going to pop in your head is what, Kim? If, if I would say I have to love myself first. <laughs> That's another one. Yeah. But we're talking about how can I find somebody? So how um, by find meeting people, you know, maybe doing something social, joining a joining some kind of group or something where you can meet other people. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. So your mind's gonna start coming up with creative ideas. Okay. So if you ask yourself, how can I, um, how can I find time to exercise? You're gonna yeah. You're going to start thinking about how you can reorganize your schedule. And that's what we did, you know, with mm -hmm. some of the stuff with you. We sat down and, and, like, calculated, like, okay, how can you do this? Where is this space? Where is that space? And mm -hmm. you were able to find spaces that yeah. you weren't using that were just mindless spaces that you were playing video games or whatever. And, you know, not that you right. play video games. So I'm just using me, other things. <laughs> Yeah, unproductive. For unproductive sure. moments, exactly. We have so many unproductive moments that we use mm -hmm. just to fill our heads with crap. So, mm -hmm. one of the things that you can do is by starting a completely different routine. That means you utilize that extra space and that time um, by um, doing things that like if you have um, time to sit there and think negative thoughts, then you have time to listen to an audio book that is a self-help yeah. book, or you can listen to Tony Robbins on YouTube. If you have time to sit there and watch Netflix, you can go, you can listen to Tony Robbins on YouTube. Mm -hmm. If you have time 
to to um, get on the phone and gossip and listen to everybody's drama. Right. They don't have time to read a self help book. I mean, mm -hmm. come on, you have you have so much time on your hands, you know, that is wasted time that you can utilize to reprogram. So, getting rid of negative thoughts is literally by putting in positive stuff. You've got to put in more positive stuff than you have negative to be able to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. So basically it's about overpowering the brain. Okay. So you've got to literally take every single moment. I'm, I'm like, I'm like the weirdest person in the whole world. I swear. I will take my phone, put um, earplugs in and I will literally walk into the grocery store listening to somebody some sort yes. of state or somebody yeah or i'll listen to awesome. a spiritual teacher or something like that and um and i'm, I'm guilty of listening to some conspiracy theory you know, i like that every so often gotta have our thing you know you gotta have a little fun sometimes right yes so, for sure yeah, but, but shane cracks me up sometimes because i'm like taking a bath and i've got and while i'm taking a bath i've got my um i've got my my phone playing a youtube video and that too yeah, I mean, you utilize that extra space, okay? You want to utilize every single moment to start putting in the good stuff. So start mm -hmm. popping in all that good stuff into your head, and you'll start noticing it starts replaying it. That's awesome. The reason that your brain is playing the negative thoughts is because that's the only thing it's been given. Okay? Yeah. No, I know, but it's true. Okay, mm -hmm. so if the brain has only been given negative thoughts, then that's what it's going to play. So mm -hmm. if you want it to start playing good stuff to you, you're going to have to start giving it good stuff for it to play back. It's like reprogramming a computer. If you've got all kinds of viruses and everything on it, you're going to have to you're going to have to kind of wipe that stuff clean. You got to start putting in some good programs in there. You know, mm -hmm. does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I really like that about you know, spending as much time as you can with the self-help or the audiobooks or, you know, Tony Robbins or Wayne Dyer on YouTube, but just any opportunity, whether it be driving in the car or maybe if you stay at home when you're doing dishes, like have, have it playing. Um, and, and sometimes showers. any kind of self-development at all, it can be, it can be cooking stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I love to watch cooking shows. I love to cook. Okay. It's, it's something that I really enjoy doing. And so sometimes I'll just sit there and watch cooking shows like anything, even some of the ones that are competitions and stuff. I mean, that's not a bad thing because what is it doing? It's, it's developing me as a person. So mm -hmm. if I'm utilizing my time doing things that makes me a better person, then I'll become a person that I like. You right. see, the reason that most people are negative is because they don't like themselves. <laughs> it's true. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. They don't like themselves. I mean, do you know that 99.9% .9 or, well, I might as well say 100% of the people walking my office don't like themselves. Wow. That's crazy. And, and so what I do is I turn them into a person that's likable. Or at least I they like, like yeah, I, think I, think I like myself now. Like <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So, Thanks. You, you know, it's like, who do I want to be? Mm -hmm. Who do I want to be? And you just think about that. It's like, you know, and you've also got to have, you know, I mean, you were talking about self-love. Self-love is the most important part, but that's not going to come until you become something that you like. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing everything that you hate. Right. It's yeah. Or you're not doing anything productive. Right. Think, you know, like, you're not feeling like you're doing anything you enjoy or that makes you a good person. It's kind of like that, which way is the scale tipping, you know, and a lot of people, I feel like it's tipping where they're doing more stuff and there's a lot of wishing. And then because of the wishing or in their heads, they wish they were a certain way, but that they're not that way. Then they, they, there's a lot of their soul. I think I feel like their spirit is like, mm -hmm. wait a minute, this isn't who I'm supposed to be. And I feel like there's like, I always felt before I worked with you, I felt very tortured in my mind. Like I remember thinking, I feel tortured because I want to be this person, but then I'm doing things that aren't getting me there. And I always felt very conflicted. And so it's I think, a lot of guilt, a lot of guilt. Yeah. Oh, my middle hashtag guilt right here all the time. 
So, mm-hmm. so let me, let me, let me just tell everybody right now. Okay. You guys just wipe the slate clean and just focus on today. Start now, right this second today, mm-hmm. today, just forget about the past because as long as you're dwelling on the past, it will never happen. So just act like you have amnesia to your past. <laughs> you know, it doesn't exist yeah. anyway. So it's not like dwelling on going to help you any. The future mm-hmm. doesn't exist either. It, anything could happen. So why not just start with a, a clean slate? Like every day is a new day for me. If I don't accomplish my goals, I don't beat myself up for not doing it. I just say, okay, today, this is what's going to happen. And you know what? And sometimes life hits you and, you know, somebody calls or I get an extra client that I, I was planning on spending some, you know, self-development on and I couldn't do it. Um, it's okay. It's okay, because guess what? Somebody else got healed. Somebody else got help, and that helped me. So mm-hmm. there's, there's uh, sometimes you don't always get to the grocery store in time or the things, you know. I mean, we have hectic lives. You know, we have so much. I start mm-hmm. early in the morning and go to late at night. You know, my dog wakes me up, and the first thing he wants to do is go for a walk, you know. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, lick, 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 wake up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's crazy. So, um So, like, um, one of the things that, um, I I don't know if Shane's still on here, but I saw him log on, but um, one of the things that he does um, that I'm really proud of him for doing is, and that's so awesome, is that he lets things go like that. And that's the thing that I get. That's probably the one thing that I hear the most is that people say that they sit and dwell on things. And, um, And it's like... You know, there's nothing, I mean, people are going to get angry. I mean, we're humans for God's sake, you know, I'm going to get angry. Mm -hmm. You know, I get, I got upset for over some kids like blocking the the, the driveway when I was trying to get in, you know, and I'll call him up and I'm like, I'm so upset. And he just starts laughing at me. You know, he lets me be there and then he kind of laughs about it and then that's it. And, and that's good. You know, he lets me stay in that space for a second and then he makes a joke and then it's done. And we kind of do the same thing for each other. He has, he comes home and he needs to vent about everything that happened at work. And the next thing I know, he's laughing and cutting up about something else. And it happens the same, same way when we have a conflict as well. So if he's upset about something, you know, I just kind of let him go and, then he walks off and then he comes back and starts talking about some movie that he wants to see or something, you know? And, mm-hmm. and it's, it's about, you know, I mean, you're going to have momentary issues sometimes where you're, you have a spontaneous reaction to stuff, but um, there's, there's things that you can do like with hypnosis that can help. Cause you can sometimes those spontaneous reactions come from your past. Oh, so yeah, I believe that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I had, you know, I mean, I think I've done a pretty good job at like reprogramming myself, but there every so often some little program that's been hidden way back there that has just pops up every so often. And, um, and I had, and so I had something happen to me not too long ago where, um, uh, Shane said something to me, we were doing something and, um, he travels a lot. So we were kind of doing a couple of different things. And so I was like, and, I don't remember exactly how the whole thing went, but it didn't actually go to plan. And he's like, I oh, just don't worry about it. And I was like, and immediately I saw that as like a takeaway. And I don't know where I got that, but I just started calling it a takeaway. And I was like, why are you taking it away? You know, and I had an emotional reaction to it. And, and he's just like, why are you so upset? You know what I mean? It was just a, a spontaneous, like a wave that kind of came over me and I caught myself and I thought, okay, where is this coming from? So, What I did was I went to bed that night and then I said, okay, where in my past did what happened that, that I'm reacting this way. And I remembered when I was a kid, I had a piano and, and um, something happened and my parents had to sell it. And so that was taken away from me. And I loved my piano. And then I had a horse when I was in high school and, and we had to get rid of the horse. And so, you know, and that was devastating to me. So it's like, so it was connected. See how things connect? Yes. And, and so yeah. once I was able to be aware of that, I was able to get rid of it and not have to, you know, just consciously saying, okay, I'm not a child anymore. Nobody's taking mm-hmm. my piano away. Nobody's taking my horse away. 
I'm a grown ass adult. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, for sure. there's, there's a lot of things that you can do by just, just by kind of going into your past and looking at where all this stuff came from and, and saying, okay, I'm acknowledging yeah. Shane says he's the taker aware. <laughs> That's his nickname. He's the taker aware, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's and but now I can laugh about it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. You know, now I'm just like ah, you know, whatever. Because I I, I literally like um, uh, you know just kind of looked into it and found out that that it was something that. Um, you know, had nothing to do with my present situation. There was no reason for me to have an, you know, a knee jerk reaction like that. So that's what happens a lot with our emotions. So one of the things that I was going to um, talk to you about, we had talked on the phone was about actually controlling the emotions. Do you remember us talking mm -hmm. about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Were you going to say something? Um, I was going to ask you, so maybe this is, goes with it. I do want you to touch on it. I don't want to forget. With okay. all of this, um, what I've noticed, okay, you hit on this with talking about the past and right now and the present, or the present and then the future. What I've noticed the way I am now, and this is like dramatically different, is that I am so much more present and I'm also so much more, uh, I have such, such gratefulness. I've always been a grateful person, like making myself be, but I have so much contentment, which is very unusual for me because I've always been a striving kind of person. And you guys know me, I'm very driven, but I feel so content. Like I literally, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I get home and I'm like, oh, these little humans, you know, and I just look at their faces and, you know, sky is just awesome. And so is that part of all of this? Yes. Your, yes. 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 Okay. Well, part of the but, but part of the program that I do is I make you focus on the things that you are grateful for, because it's only in the state of gratefulness that you're able to, you know, to be able to be present. I mean, I can't be present unless I'm actually looking at what I have to be grateful for. I have an empowerment group that um, I I have a group of people and we're part of this little network and text group and every day I have everybody say three things that they're grateful for. You have to be creative, right? <laughs> and so they have right. some new stuff and I'm part of it too. So I do it, you know, even though I created it, I still do it. And, and so we all like say something that we're grateful for and then we comment on each other's little comments and stuff like that and what it did was it started kind of opening something up I started noticing a transition with everybody everybody was like yeah yeah you know the sun is shining I should be happy you know <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I just got this new yoga mat and got the on it so I'm super happy Yay. Oh my God, I just found my favorite drink in the grocery store. Yay. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, we get like, yeah. you can like just be present with what's going on right now in this very moment. Cause the, you know what, here's the problem with most humans They're because they're so focused on the past mm -hmm. and they're so focused on the future and neither one of them exists anymore. So what ends up happening is, is when you're focused on the past and you're dwelling, oh, but I did this and I'm a horrible person and this happened to me and no, 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 and you're focused on that, you wake up the next day and that day is shitty. And that shade, shitty day is from you sitting there dwelling on that. So then you really screw up that mm -hmm. day because you're so focused on this that what ends up happening is, is that you end up making a huge mistake and then then you carry it. Now you're carrying the past and the present, and then you move into the next present and you've got, now you've got three or four things. And then each day it just keeps on adding up. And before you know it, it's a snowball effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so as long as you're carrying your past with you, there is no way you're going to heal. You have to be present. So people ask me, what's the difference between depression and anxiety? Depression is when you are focused on the past. Anxiety is when you're focused on the future. Wow. I, that's amazing. I was just talking to somebody about that yesterday. I wish I would have known that. That's very clear. <laughs> happiness. Happiness is when you're present. Mm -hmm. So if you are present, that's the only space that you're ever going to find happiness in. Ever. 
you will never find happiness in the past. You're never going to have happiness in the, and I'm not saying that people don't have happy moments in the past. Okay. I'm always calling Shane up and telling him something that the dog did. And that was the past, but it was my present right. because I'm talking about, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. my dog, there was a stray dog and my dog was like out on the patio and, and he couldn't get to her because of the fence. And, but he, he was so feeling sorry for her that he kicked his bowl over to try to share his food with her. And I just thought, Oh my God. You know, so I'm like calling him. I'm like, ah. <laughs> it was the sweetest thing. And so, so, so there are those happy moments that we have that we can sit on and we want to reminisce those moments. Okay. So it is important that, that we reminisce on the positive things that have happened to us. Those are good spaces and those are places that can get you into another space. You know, if you think about the things that, you know, I was talking to a client today and she's like, well, how do I get there? And I said, all right, well, we're sitting here talking about all this and you're feeling kind of crappy, right? And she goes, yeah. And I said, okay, let's talk about dogs for a second. What kind of, do you have a dog? No. I said, well, what kind of dog would you like? And so she starts telling me about dogs and we had this whole conversation about how she likes little dogs. And I was talking about how I like big dogs and, and she's like, no, I think I want to go get a dog now, you know, and, she's like, <sighs> and, and, and she's, and, and I was like, how do you feel right now? And she goes really good. And that's because I got her off of the thought, you know, so I got her present in this moment, having a conversation with me about mm -hmm. animals. And I got her right there in that moment. And so if you can stay present, that is the only space that you're going to be happy. That's it. Happiness does not come from the past, and it doesn't come from the future. If you're sitting in any one of those spaces, you're going to be unhappy. Okay. So and that sounds like it goes hand in hand with controlling your thoughts, which we mm -hmm. didn't talk about. So can you, can you elaborate on that? So controlling oh. your thoughts. So Oh, and just that's why I, I, that's why I, my battery isn't dead, but it's at 20%. Okay. So keep that in mind for timing. Okay. Okay. Just, just kind of keep me informed when you say, okay, enough. I can talk about this forever. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, elaborate on your question a little bit. So with controlling your thoughts. So one of the things that, cause this to me, when you first embark on this, um, and by the way, for those that are watching, if you, um, you don't, Michelle can do work with you remotely. I should have started out with the beginning because I know some of you know I live in Austin. Um, so if, you, if you're liking all this and you want um, her to help you, um, just know that. So when I first started with you, it was, it was just kind of overwhelming. Um, the thoughts, right? The programming, it's all from when, you know, I'm 37, so it's my whole life. So when you first start on this, um, can you talk a little bit about how you take control of your thoughts? Like, is it paying attention all day? Is it writing down to oh, people okay. who okay. in their journal? Like, I'm okay. noticing this. Like, how do they make that shift? Okay, so one of the very first things I do is I, I, I have people journal for a whole week. And when you journal for a whole week, basically, you're really kind of getting in touch with what's really going on subconsciously. So a lot of people don't realize because they're, they're not really paying attention to the thoughts because they're watching TV and doing all these other things. So they're multitasking. So mm -hmm. the subconscious mind is throwing all this negative stuff. And that while they're watching TV, playing on a video game, da, 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 da. So thoughts are popping in and out and, and randomly coming in and out. And, and so you're not really aware because you're not even present with yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of zombie mode. And so because you're not aware within yourself, you, you don't really, um, you're not really aware with what's going on, you know, at all. So I usually have people journal and I have them journal for a week so they can kind of get in touch with themselves, like find out what it is that they're really feeling. How do they feel about themselves? And most people are really shocked because there's a lot of repetitious things that end up coming out that are very negative. Okay. And so once we determine that, once we, got to fly <laughs> yeah once we determine what the negative thoughts are the, then we start reframing them and now reframing them doesn't necessarily mean you lie to yourself in some aspects you might need to but in most aspects you're really just looking at it from the truth perspective versus the stories that you tell yourself so let, let me give you an example um, one of the ones that I hear the most is that I'm unworthy or I'm unworthy of love 
-hmm. And so I usually ask them, I said, okay, so out of everybody on the planet, is there anybody that you know that doesn't deserve love? And most people say no. And I said, well, what about serial killer? And they're like, well, they deserve love too. And I'm like, okay, so even a serial killer deserves love because the love can actually change them, right? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so you're the only person on the planet that doesn't deserve love. And they're like, oh. oh. <laughs> so basically what I do is I help them point out what it is that is not, they're untruths, the stories, the lies that they tell themselves. Okay. I had another client who said um, one of her, her things was, is that um, you have to be skinny to be sexy. You have to be skinny for what? You have to be skinny to be sexy. Okay. And so I actually said, okay, let's get on zoom and I'm going to share my, I'm going to share my, my screen with you. And she said, okay. So I, I pulled it up and zoom, you can share the screen. And so I pulled her up and I got on Google and typed in sexy, um, voluptuous women. And mm -hmm. there was all yeah, these say. that looked mm -hmm. really good and they were like curvy and they have lots of voluptuous boobs and, you know, and everything. And, and I, and she's like, Oh, oh I see your point. And I go, you do not have to be skinny. And so I said, all right, skinny, sexy women. I typed that in the Google bar. And here are all these. And I said, wait a second, look at this right here. This looks like a boy in a pair of lace panties. I said, there is nothing sexy about that. <laughs> and she was like, <laughs> and she said, and she started laughing and she's like, okay, okay, I get it. And I said, sexy is <laughs> big butts for life. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Comments are hilarious. Um, <laughs> And so, um, what I, what you have to realize is, is that, you know, sexiness is a mindset. It has nothing to do with the, you know, the way you look, it's the way that you present yourself. It has to do with your mindset it has to do with the way you carry yourself. So she was lying to herself by saying that she couldn't be sexy. And as we started talking, she's like, People have told me all my life I've been sexy. And I said, see? And you, I said, so you're, you're sexy whether you lose 10 pounds or you gain 10 pounds. You're going to be sexy regardless, okay? So, so if you want to lose weight, you lose weight. But don't lose weight because, you know, because if you put yourself in that entrapment, like, I want to be sexy and I can't be sexy because I'm too fat, no, no, no. It turns into this looping pattern and then you never lose the weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the your mind gets all you know wrapped up in this mm -hmm. nasty place, you know, of self entrapment, you know, and all this other stuff. So it's like, so another one of the things that I do is once we reframed all of those, then um, then the next thing that we do is we start writing them. We write your story. So you start rewriting your story and you start telling yourself the truth. I am mm -hmm. sexy. I am beautiful. I am worthy of love. And you say, and you write that and you write it and you write it and you write it and you write it. Now, here's the thing. There is um, a Hindu, um, and I may be saying this wrong, so if there's anybody Hindu on here, please forgive me. Um, but there's a Hindu sort of like culture tradition thing where they wear these mala balls, um, you know, the beads, the long beads, 108 beads. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so they wear those beads, and there's 108 beads. And what they do, it's kind of like a prayer meditation, is they take bead by bead, and they say a mantra, okay? And that mantra is used like an affirmation. So you just say it over and over again, and you just kind of sit there until you get all the way back around. So basically, I took the same concept, and, and I had them start writing. And they write um, um, the same thing over and over again, but you do it for a minimum of 7 to 15 minutes. Because depending on how long your your stuff is, you want to make sure that you're saying it enough to where the brain starts like hearing it. Okay. Mm -hmm. At first, it's gonna you're gonna get kicked back. Your brain's gonna reject it. You're gonna say, you know, oh, you're fat. The the, you know, you are you. You're stupid. You're not worthy. And it's gonna kick back for a while. But that'll go on for approximately three, four, five days. Towards the end of the week, it'll stop. And because your mind's starting to, but because there's other things you're doing, it's not just the writing. You're going to be listening to right. stuff and you're going to be reading stuff and you're going to be inputting all this stuff into your brain. So okay. that's kind of a, does that answer your question? 
Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, just because of the battery situation, go ahead and post a comment if you have any questions for Michelle. Um, and then also put in, oh, okay, 10%. Yeah, we'll wrap it up just to be safe. Go ahead and put in the comments your favorite part about what you heard today on this interview with Michelle. And then, uh, but just we'll take one quick second to see if there's any, uh, any comments. If you didn't already, post a one in the comments. If you're watching this live, post a two if you're watching the replay. Put new if it's your first time hearing me or Michelle, and put shared if you shared this video. Please, please, please share this. We'll post it after here, and so you guys can share it wherever you want to. Um, it's totally it's public, and everybody can hear this information. Um, Michelle, why don't you tell them um, how they can get in touch with you and find out more about what you do? Okay, so um, if you go to my Facebook page, because you can just kind of click on on this mm -hmm. um, and see or. You know, it's Michelle Thompson, and if you go to my Facebook page, right on the front of it, it says Life Coach, and it has my phone number. Right there, very first. Okay. okay. So, um, basically, just send me a text message. Um, I rarely answer my phone, so just send me a text message. I'll send you a link mm -hmm. on how to book an appointment, and we can kind of go from there. And um, any, I do post videos live. I do a lot of, like, a lot of videos, a lot of comments and stuff so if you want to join my page you can get a lot of free information um i am by the way i am um actually taking this whole program and putting it in a book and in the book yeah and it's it's going to be launching january 2018 and yeah so in the book it's going to have this is what's so cool is that every week that you're supposed to do something it's going to have page by page the thing you're supposed to do so, awesome. so it's going to have uh -huh. a chapter talking about that segment, about what you're trying to learn and what you're doing and why it's so important. And then, then it'll have page by page at the end of that. It'll be like, okay, today you do this. Don't forget to do that. Here's the section you do it in and they'll check boxes okay. and all that kind of stuff. Journaling, it'll have journal pages, everything. And, um, it's going to go into explaining how the subconscious mind works, how the conscious mind works, you know, the whole thing. I'm so excited. So I'm going to be yes, uh, okay, so ordering somebody, that. Somebody just said must pre-order this book. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to pre-order it. Um, I'm going to do uh, Christmas gifts with it. And then I'm also going to do a couple giveaways, you guys, once it's available, um, but get your own copy for sure. So um, give so me what the I'll info do, once it's um, So what I'll do you guys for y'all is um, because it is a work, it's not just a regular book. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's going to retail at twenty nine ninety nine. So, okay. um, it, because it's going to have a lot more to that. Some of the life coaching books that I looked up and I was doing the research on it, um, were actually selling for 29 to 49 and they yeah. didn't any of the stuff that I do. Okay. So this is, this is energetics. We're going to get into learning how to, in the book, you're going to manifest your life. It's going to, you're going to be motivated. You're going to create the life you want. It's going to have a lot of really, really good stuff in it. And so basically, um, on if you go to my Facebook page, okay, um, sometime probably within the next couple of days, so give me a chance because I haven't put it on there yet, okay? But okay. I will. Um, I'll put a pre-order link, and I'll give you guys, anybody who's watched this video, if you watch the video and you say that you, you're doing a pre-order, I'll do it for $14.99. Okay, awesome. Can they message you, or do they have to wait for the link? Um, I don't even have. I don't even have a link created on my website yet, so I okay. definitely need to have that. Okay. I should have done that before I did this interview. That's okay, um, you guys. And you guys, if you want, um, just make a note, and she'll have it, and I'll share it on my page. But make sure um, you mention that you watched this video. But that would actually help, probably, is if they did send me a text message telling me that, because that would that or would. Message. Finish. That way I could send mm -hmm. them directly the link, but I will okay. have it on my website and I'll have it on my Facebook page and I would give you my website address, but I'm in the process of changing it right now because it's just really, really long. So okay. when I first, and then, um, yeah, it was just to cut, just to, I'll cut you guys off real quick cause I'm going to wrap it up. So, um, in the comments, put, put, I want the book. Put that in the comments because we're going to have a lot of people on the replay too. Um, so put that in the comments and that'll be a way we can go back and check because we have, we'll have this video and we can look that way too. So between 
her text message, us posting it once it's live in this in the comments. We'll make sure that everybody finds out about that because that's a steal. And I want you guys to be thinking about people you can get get the workbook for because this is literally something that can change the people in your lives, lives in your own lives. So Michelle, thank you so much for yeah. being on here. Let's see some hearts. You guys, isn't she awesome? And I owe her forever and ever and ever. I can never pay you back enough for everything you've done for me in my life. And I'm able to give to other people because of you. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. We'll definitely have to do this again. Absolutely, because there's so much more that we can get into. Because we can we can get we can do an interview on manifestation and energetics, and even subconscious mm -hmm. energetics. And that is an awesome subject. You know that. I mean, oh yeah, absolutely. Completely transform your life by understanding it. Because I take a completely different approach than like the law of attraction. So and it works. I mean, it's like boom. You know. Awesome. Let's so, do it. So okay. yeah schedule another time and um, okay. thank you so much for inviting me in and um, I'm you know and honestly I don't how do I get out of here do I just hit the X so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut you out so everybody say goodbye to Michelle thanks for all the hearts and thumbs up have a good night and we'll see her on the next interview okay guys I'm gonna wrap it up here thank you so much for watching make sure you guys share this share 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 put share in the comments and isn't she awesome I told you she's amazing and for those that stayed on the whole time, you are awesome. Make sure you guys get a copy of her book and have a great night. Bye.